Hi, my name is Mark Platten. I am the Teller County Extension Director and also in charge of the Colorado Master Gardeners of Teller County. Today we'll be talking about how to build a raised bed hoop covering. Uh, and there's a lot of ways you can see this on the, on the internet, all kinds of different designs. I kind of prefer this one myself, so I'm going to show you how this kind of unfolds for me. First of all, I'm going to show you some of the tools we need. I've got my carpenter's pencil there, some actually drywall screws. They can be any kind of screws, but those are about an inch and a half long. Probably anything from an inch to an inch and a half will be fine. I've got my utility knife. I've got some galvanized tube straps there. This is a, a PVC pipe cutter, my handy dandy electric uh, drill, and a tape measure. So those are some of the tools that we'll be using today in designing this. I'll show you I've got a couple of my raised beds already covered this way, or, or at least in the beginning phases there, and all that's left is for me to kind of cover them up. Now my raised beds are 3 foot wide by 12 foot long. Uh, there's a reason why I like to have them 3 foot wide, because I can reach them easily from either side of the bed without having to... Uh, without having to actually put my foot or lean into the bed itself and, and, and which can cause compaction of the soil, which we don't want to have happen. Uh, it also makes it a nice size for my particular yard. Um, 12 foot long, that's just how I, that's how I did it. I picked up some 2x12s and that's a Doug Fir 2x12s from Home Depot, I believe it was. Um, so my raised bed is about 11 inches deep with soil and that's actually enough for most of the raised beds. I hope you can see on these other beds there's equal spacing between the hoops there. And what I've done here, I've spaced them three feet apart. So I've got my tape measure laid out here. I'm just going to mark off every three feet with a mark. You can see six feet there, nine feet, and my 12 is already done. I chose every three feet for my measurements to put these hoops in because if you get a little bit any narrower than that, like at say a two foot spacing, it's a little could be a little bit challenging getting in between and working the soil and working the beds out. If you get any wider than that, you lose the structural support of it. So on this particular beds, I'm working with every three feet on that. All right, what I'm gonna do now, since I've finished marking these um, every three foot, I'm gonna take my straps here and my screws. And where my marks are, and I'm starting here at the very beginning, so I know there's going to be a place right here. So I'm kind of close to the end there, but not all the way, so you don't split it out. I'm going to put this one here, keeping them relatively level with each other. You can see I'm not getting too crazy, but I'm not going to screw them in all the way. And there's a reason for that. When I put that that uh, half inch PVC in there, I want it to be able to slide easily in there. So I'm going to put these all the way around as uh, and each of these, just the top one at first. I'll put a second one down below afterwards. All right, hopefully you can see I've got these all put in on, on every three feet here. I'm going to then take my half inch PVC. I chose half inch. You can use you can use a uh, larger than that three quarter, but you have to use the three quarter inch clamps in instead of the half inch clamps like I've got. What I like about the half inch is it bends fairly easy, as I'm gonna show you here. First thing I'm gonna do is take this down, I'm gonna slide it into, and this a little bit hard to do, do it with one hand there. I'm gonna slide it down in there. So I was able to do that because that's all loose. I'm just gonna slide it down to the bottom and leave it sit there. I'm gonna come over to the other side here and you may not be able to see this yet very well, but I'm bending this. I'm going to slide it down in the slot on the other side here and slide it all the way in. So there's the first of my five hoops. So that's pretty simple. So I'm going to continue to do that along down there, but you can see there's only one hook there. Whereas on the other one, there's two clamps down there and that'll provide stability. That bottom clamp then will come in you can see all the way down there will provide nice rigidity to it. Um, you can also, as you're putting in that bottom clamp, this can move, will like to move this way and that way. See that bottom moving there? You can move them and put the clamp on and so it's sitting actually vertical. So I'm going to do that. All right, so now I've got the five in. 
And if I hadn't said this before, these are the this is the 10 foot long sticks of the half inch PVC. You're gonna get these from Home Depot, Lowe's, any of those uh, supply stores. They're about uh, just under two dollars each, so pretty inexpensive that way. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna look down and kind of see how they are aligned height wise. Most of them are pretty good, except for maybe the the second to last one here, because I want to make sure that they sit. When I'm ready to go, I want them to sit in there a little bit better. So I'm going to just make sure that that's the case before I put the bottom rung on. So I'm going to look at it again from this end. I'm going to have to raise that up just a hair. And now they kind of match up fairly decent. So I'm going to put the second uh, clamp on to, to straighten them up, and then we'll be done with this uh, portion of the project. Now once I screw that bottom one on tight, then I can go up and screw the other one, the top one on, tight as well. And that will hold them in. Now sometimes people like, instead of using these clamps, like to use rebar. This is a half inch rebar. You could probably do at least a three quarter inch rebar. You could either pound it in the inside, like that, and it had to be down further than that. You want probably a good six to eight inches sticking up out of the ground, or you could hammer it beside here. Um, what I don't like about that is it's loose, it's kind of like a sleeve on top of there. And once this gets covered with a plastic or whatever you're putting over the top of there, it can become a kite if you've got heavy winds. So that could theoretically kind of come off this sleeve of the rebar here. And come off that way so what i like about these is that once that's in there it's not coming out it's anchored in here really nice and tightly with those two clamps and uh it'd take uh, one heck of a wind to pull that hole you'd have to almost pull that whole bed out so i just want to show you that you, you screw the bottom ones in first tight once you get that and then you'll tighten up the top ones and i'm going to continue doing that all the way around all right, now it's time for the covering of the beds, and you can do this in a bunch of different ways as well. You can use plastic, you can use um, cloth, you can use all kinds of different tools. Most times people use this, this plastic sheeting. This is not the ideal one. It's not UV um, coated uh, because they didn't have any in the garden section, so I just went to the paint department at Home Depot and got some of their 6 mil plastic sheeting that uh, they use for the painters use. Um, the heavier, the, the higher the number of mils, so this is a six mil, you can get it down to four mil or three mil. Uh, the higher the number, the thicker the plastic. So this is a fairly heavy uh, plastic with that. What I did on these beds, I'm going to just rotate you and keep you getting dizzy here. As you can see here, here was my original, my end rail here, but I put another, I put another ring here. And that's because... Just like everything else, there's a bunch of different ways of covering this. I'm going to go a little bit more elegant, I guess, or um, you can just wrap this whole entire thing in that plastic I had back there. Um, if you noticed on that box, we'll go back and look at it here. It shows that it's 10 foot wide by 100 feet long. So why 10 feet? Because my sticks here are 10 feet long. And I've got about, oh, 10 inches on each side cover. So I'm gonna have plenty of plastic to go all the way down around here once I'm done. So if you get it any narrow, if you get an eight foot, this wouldn't fit, you'd have gaps here. So the 10 foot wide is an important one and I can also cover them the end caps with that as well. So I'm gonna show, I'm gonna do with this again. I'm just gonna do what I did before and put this half inch um, schedule 40 in there and wrap it around on the other side. And I'll show you kind of what comes next. So stand by. All right, so the next thing I want to do is cut a plastic sheeting for this very end loop here. So you can see I've got two now on both ends down there and over here. I'm actually going to cover this end hoop individually with plastic so I can use the other one. But I need to measure the, the width of this, which is, as I know the bed is three feet wide, this is a little over three feet. So I'm going to probably cut the plastic here at four feet just so I can wrap around the corners and stuff. So this is done. Again, I know it's 10 feet wide, but it's folded over several times. So I'm going to pull stuff out. I just need to measure it out about three and a half feet and I will cut it that way. 
So hopefully you can see that that's at the four foot mark there. All I do is put a two by four underneath that plastic. I'm just going to cut across there if you want to be a little bit more exact than that to make it exactly four feet. You can do that, but I'm just going to do it with my using my utility knife and actually make a cut right down the middle here of the two by. And there's my sheet. So the next thing I'm going to do in preparation for wrapping these end pieces, I've got this half inch poly tube irrigation tubing there that I just had left over from before. I'm going to cut these into about oh three inch sections here. I'm using my tool here or I can use a utility knife as well. Either one works. So I'm just going to cut a bunch of those three inch pieces. I'll see you soon. And here I've got a three inch section there. I'm just going to make a slit down, down the center of it uh, so that I can put it over the top of the tubing that I'll demonstrate here in a minute. So let me just do that real quickly. So what I've done, I've just cut a slice right down the middle of it here, so you can hopefully see. Alright, so I've opened up the plastic and laid it over this first hoop, not the second one. It's extended around there. I made sure there was kind of on the inside of the bed here, it's covered down to the, to the bottom piece there. And with these little pieces that we just cut here, all I'm going to do is just slide them right over the top of the end pieces like this and actually nicely hold that plastic right to that half inch and schedule 40 PVC. Now again, if, if I had gone with that three quarter inch, I would have probably had to use the three quarter inch uh, poly pipe to, uh, for that, but with the half inch PVC, I was able to use this three quarter. It stays under nice and tight, holds it down there. And uh, I'm going to complete wrapping this one up and you'll see what it looks like. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of leftover um, plastic there. So I'm going to cut it off, but right at the base of, so at the, right at the bottom of the pit, because I'm going to roll it up then and, and anchor it down. So I'll show you that in the next step here. So I'm just going to cut this piece off. What I'm going to do is take one of these one inch by two inch uh, eight foot long. They were eight foot long until I cut them into three foot long sections, but they're furring strips you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. They're about a buck and a quarter a piece for an eight foot stick. Um, because my beds are three feet wide, I cut them, cut two out of each of those sticks. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the bottom, as I mentioned. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to roll it up like a burrito here a few times like that and hold on one second while I kind of use both hands to straighten it out so it looks better there what we do is I'm going to drill three holes through here because that that furring strip tends to split if you don't pre-drill so I'm going to drill it and then I'm going to put three screws in there uh, in this case you want at least probably an inch and a half to an inch and five eighths minimum length screw on this uh, just to hold it in there all right, so what that does then is it really secures that plastic to this final outside edge here. So, it kind of looks like on the end there. I'll show you the inside here. I can clean that up a little bit better and make it look a little bit nicer, but nobody's going to see the inside very much. But what that does is give you a double layer of plastic, a nice insulative area here on these end pieces. So, um, and should protect animals from getting in, in that with that bottom piece screwed down there. So I'm going to do that to the, to the other end as well, and then we'll put the, the final cover over the top. Stand by. So both the end caps are done now, and next I'm going to cover the main body. And again, I'm going to turn it sideways here. You could have made this a whole lot easier and just wrap the plastic around the entire thing and clamp it down would have been nice and tightly sealed. Um, it would have done, done the work just perfectly. I'm doing this a little bit higher end with things and uh, putting a lot more time and even money and effort into it. But I'm going to continue with the process. So, the next thing to do is I took uh, a 2x12 uh, and cut it in half. I'm going to use those as my kind of my rails. Uh, I'm going to cut the 12 foot of plastic there maybe a little over 12 foot, probably 12 and a half feet of plastic. 
So my ends are covered. I'm going to use these one inch clamps. Uh, I was probably would have gone with a three quarter inch if I could have found them, but they didn't have any in stock there. So I went with the core, uh, with the full inch clamps and I'll show you how I'm going to clamp that to the structure. All right, stand by. All right, so now you can see I put those one inch clips all the way down. So now that railing can move up and down around there and it'll structurally hold everything together and also keep that from blowing off or opening up or anything. So next thing I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I've got it now on both sides. Again, what's nice about this is that it lifts right up. And I put some clamps down here to kind of hold everything together on the ends. Well, I can also use them here on the ends to hold up that because what most people don't realize is that um, one of the biggest problems we have in the summer months are that these covered um, hoop tunnels here get too hot. So you need to let the air in. And so this creates, again, I can just pull that down, lift this up to whatever height I want it, keep the dogs out to whatever level still gets the air in from there and it also protects it from hail this way now I can scoot this thing all the way up if I would like and now I've got easy access to the beds and and very simple from either side I've got access so again this is a little bit of a of a more expensive, more intense way of doing things, but I do like this setup here and uh, does keep the beds several degrees warmer and extends my growing season by about uh, four or five days on each end and also, like I said, protects it from, from uh, hail and critters and other stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll be sharing more in the future. Take care.